Well, um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Uh, we would like to welcome you to our webinar session on preparing you to come to ISS this September. Um, well, as you know, my name is Darren, and I'm responsible for recruitment. And today, um, I, with, here with me is Mariana, who is the admission officer, and also Ms. Vika Blau, who is the senior policy advisor. We are missing one. We are missing a student. Uh, she has troubles with her computer, but she will join us shortly. So um, without further ado, I would like to pass on the floor to uh, Vika, who will begin the presentation. Thank you, Darren, and uh, welcome to everyone uh, to this webinar focusing on the preparation of the coming academic year. Uh, as announced by Darren, I, my name is Vika, Vika Blau. I'm a policy advisor at ISS. And um, maybe I should first give the floor to Marianne van Dieren from the admission office to introduce uh, herself and the work that she is doing. Marianne, can I ask you to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Vika. Um, my name is Marianne and I work in the admission office with my colleagues Els Veldman and Amina Said. Um, our office processes all the applications for MA and PhD programs. And once you are accepted, you will receive your admission letter from us and also information on the finances related to participating in the MA program. Um, once students find a funding source or a scholarship, we start the registration procedure for you. And for most students, this means uh, initiating the visa procedure with our colleagues of the International Office of Erasmus University. They deal with this part of um, your stay in the Netherlands, but everything else related to your studies at the ISS is arranged by the ISS, like housing, financial matters, etc. Um, our office also administrates scholarship programs like uh, OKP, uh, OKP LPDP, which is formerly the Stunet Scholarship, um, the OTS, the Dry Linden, the ISS Scholarships, Excellence Fund and Hardship Fund. Um, over the coming weeks, you will receive from our office several emails with practical information. Um, this is information on your arrival and your stay at the ISS. Um, it will include information on uh, group appointments we are making for you for registration in the town hall, municipality, uh, a TB checkup, and also, if possible, the picking up of your residence permit. Um, also, we will send you information on the introductory program, when it starts, what to expect, um, where to find information on the academic side of the program, etc. Uh, opening of a bank account, also very important. Um, this is a very busy period in our office. so. Um, we are still dealing with a lot of last minute applications, financial arrangements. Um, we try to answer your emails as soon as possible, but please be patient if we don't reply immediately and keep asking your questions to us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marjan, for, uh, for this introduction, for all the work that you're doing. And I know that you are very busy, but uh, we are happy to have you here in the, in the webinar. Um, so, uh, if you have any questions specific for, uh, for Marjan, please ask them in the chat, chat environment and after the presentation, we will deal with all the questions that came in. Uh, Niati, great to have you here as well. Maybe you can introduce yourself. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm a, a master's degree student, so I will be your old batch, as we call it. Um, I actually live in the dorms, so anybody who has questions about the dorms, you're welcome to ask me. Um, but yeah, I'm current. We're just about to start our thesis process. So when you meet us, we will be we will have finished all of our classes, and uh, we will basically be stressing out about our theses. But it's a fun process, so I know you guys will like it too. Yeah, so maybe you can share with uh, everyone from which country you are and in which major you are enrolled to give a bit more of background of information. Course. 
Of course. So I'm from the GDP major, Governance and Development Policy. There's about 25 of us in my batch. Um, and I moved here from Singapore, but I have an Indian background. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your introduction. And um, so let's start with presentation that I'm uh, planning to give. I will start with a short presentation about the structure of the MA program and then some practicalities and then we have ample time for questions to either one of us uh, you can also ask them in a general term and then we will divide them among the, the four of us so let me first give a, a very brief introduction about the student i say student body for the coming year we are expecting around 140 students in our two master programs uh, we have two two programs one is the ma in development studies uh, that is by far the largest program of about 120 students we are expecting. And we are also offering a an, uh, joint master program with three partner universities on public policy. So we also have some participants in this webinar who uh, uh, are going to enroll in that program. So as you can see from, from the, the map that we have students from all continents. So we have a very multicultural environment at ISS, not only for students, but also for the staff. You will see, I think about 60% of our staff is also non-Dutch. So it's a very international and intercultural environment. Uh, also, there's a, a huge variety in the background of our students. We have students with 20 years of work experience and we have fresh graduate students. We have people who are working in the government at the ministry or at a, a local government or at a community-based organization. We have staff from, from non-governmental organizations or international organizations. Uh, we have staff who have their own private uh, company, uh, staff from universities, teachers, researchers. So there's a huge variety in background of our students. And in our teaching methods, we make use of this, this variety and this high diversity and we try to create a very rich environment, learning environment, where students learn as much from each other as from the, the ISS staff. Um, so let me start with a first introduction on the MA in development studies. Um, Darren, maybe you can show the next slide, please. So it's an MA in development studies and it starts in the, on the 5th of September. And most students are arriving uh, in the first weekend of September. And in fact, we start with an introduction week, which is also for the students in the, the Mundus Map program. Um, in this uh, introduction week, you will meet your fellow students, you will meet the teaching staff, we will take care of arranging all the practicalities, so like uh, uh, registration with the, with the municipality, um, uh, arrange all other uh, practicalities, you will get an introduction to the, to the Hague. Um, we will also introdu introduce you to the electronic learning environment and the student registration system that we have at, uh, at ISS. So in short, it's really uh, an introduction week. In this introduction week, you will also get an introduction on the foundation courses that we are offering. And uh, we are offering foundation courses in sociology, um, political science, and economics. And we offer those courses at intermediate and advanced level. Uh, because we have this high variety in, in background of our students. For some are fresh graduates uh, in economics, for those we expect to take the advanced economic course. Uh, but they might prefer uh, the, the intermediate sociology course. Uh, to, to get uh, the sufficient background uh, in all the free disciplines um, that are the basis of development studies, so sociology, political science, and economics. Um, also, so those foundation courses start in, in, in the second week of September, and they last only till the end of October. Also in the second week of September, you start with a general course on development studies. This is a truly interdisciplinary course where you will participate with all the students in all majors in development studies. And this course uh, consists of a combination of, of uh, lectures and tutorial groups. And those tutorial groups, uh, we are mixing the students. So you get to know all the students uh, in your batch uh, in, in the MA in development studies. 
Um, in November, uh, the foundation courses have, have their exam. And after that, you start with the core course for the major for which you registered. So there you really get to know the people with whom you will be in the study program uh, the, the, yeah, the rest of the, 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 the year. Um, so uh, also in November, we start counseling on optional courses that you get. And um, so I saw that Darren moved already to the next slide, which is about the term two and the term three. So in term two and term three, we're offering uh, courses, core courses and, and optional courses, and also research methodology courses. We have qualitative and quantitative research methodology courses, both in term two and term three. And uh, these prepare you for your research paper or your RP as we call it. And the research paper is a very important research component of our MA and development studies. So we start with the very first preparation already uh, before the Christmas break. And um, during the whole year, you will have various sessions to focus, to, to make your choice for the topic for your research paper. Uh, then um, in May, you have to give a, a design seminar to present the topic of your research paper. And then you have to present the first outcome um, or a draft in, in September, and then you finish your research paper, your RP in November. So this is very short and very brief on the MA in development studies. Uh, on our website, you will find the academic calendar. That is still the old one for the current batch. And the new one will be uh, online uh, in August. So it's not there yet. But there, there will be changes, but there are no major changes. So if you want to orientate yourself further on the structure of the program, the type of courses the, that we are offering, you can go to the academic calendar on the website and that is a very useful uh, source of information. So let me now move to our other program, which is the Mundus Map uh, program. Uh, Mundus Map Master in Public Policy is a two year master program. Uh, it's a, a smaller group of around 10 to 15 students this year. Uh, this is a two year program where the first year students are either going to the ISS or they are going to the Central European University in Vienna. And the second year they are going either to uh, the, the Institute eBay in Barcelona in Spain or they are going to the University of York in the UK. So these students are at ISS only for one year. And in term one, they have specific courses for the Moonish Map program. Uh, one of those is, will take place at the Rotterdam uh, um, University, in Erasmus University in Rotterdam, I mean. Uh, and as of term two and term three, they will join the courses together with the other students in the MA in development studies. So uh, although they have a separate program, they are part of the ISS community and they are also invited to all events that are that are taking place uh, in ISS. Um, I won't go into details on the exact uh, uh, program guide, but you can find this program guide and all other information on the dedicated website, which you probably know already, which, was, but, which is the moonismap.org uh, website. So this was a very short and brief introduction to the program. So let me now move to the practicalities and let me start with the COVID-19. Of course, we had wished that uh, the whole pandemic was over by now, and unfortunately, it's not. Uh, at this moment, um, for quite a few months already, all coronavirus measures uh, have been lifted in the Netherlands. So we are doing relatively good. Uh, there are uh, infections in the Netherlands, but overall, people are not getting very ill uh, from it. But that might change. And as you might know, we are entering the, the winter season in October, November. So we uh, have to be prepared that some measures will be back in place by then. But for now, the advice continues to be wash your hands, cough and sneeze in your elbow, stay at home when you're not feeling well and do take a test. Um, ensure a good flow of fresh air. Um, but for example, face masks are not required uh, in public transport or in uh, public places. Although some people choose to use them uh, still, so that's up to you. 
Um, many people, most people are vaccinated in the Netherlands. I think it's around 90% of the people are vaccinated. And if you're not vaccinated yet, you can also get a vaccination for free in the Netherlands once you, you are here. Um, I, I wish I could give you more information on all the uh, requirements. As it is now, you don't have to go into quarantine when you are arriving in the Netherlands, but that might change. So we advise you, you will also get the link from uh, our admission office uh, to take a close look at, um, at the measures that uh, apply to your, to your country um, and uh, to check the FAQ on our website with links for the, for the latest updates. So, um, let me think. Yes, right. Preparation of your stay. Well, you got quite a nice introduction from Marianne already on all the work that the admission office is doing. And you probably are already in close contact with the admission office. Uh, they take care of uh, the insurance. You will have to have an insurance that's obligatory in the Netherlands. Let me get my page back. Um, sorry about this. Um, and the admission office will ask you to provide a proof of your insurance or they'll arrange the insurance for you. Also, for some of you, uh, the, the, ticket, the flight tickets will be arranged by the admission office. That depends on the scholarship that you have or that you don't have, but you will know about it. And for the others who have to arrange the flight themselves, we ask them to inform us of your flight details. Um, we, want to, we would like to know when you exactly you are arriving to make everything, to prepare everything. We have a kind of pickup service at the Schiphol Airport. So we're trying to arrange a pickup from the previous batch of students for all our new incoming students. And if not, you will get the directions how to get to, to by train uh, to, uh, to the ISS. Um, well, for, for many of you, it's the first time that you're going to Europe and it will be a very new international experience for all of you. So we advise you to check also the websites of the NAFIC and the municipalities. Uh, many links are provided on our website. I'm sure Darren will also provide you with those uh, links. There's a lot of information available to prepare yourself for your stay uh, in the Netherlands. I would also like to, to mention the Facebook, for, Facebook group for prospective students. Um, that is a very uh, lively and interactive Facebook group where both new students are uh, members, but also old students are members. And you can ask many questions you might have in that Facebook uh, group. There's also a WhatsApp group for new students. Uh, and that's really a nice way to find out who else is coming from your countries. You might be on the same uh, flight. Um, when you are arriving, you might want to find out if there's someone else around to go for a walk in the, in the Hague. So I would really urge you to join both the Facebook group and the WhatsApp group of new students. So um, let me now get to the housing at ISS. Um, you might have heard that in, in many cities in the Netherlands, housing is really an issue and a problem. Uh, but for ISS, we have made reservations in hostels for ISS students. So those of you who confirm that they're coming to The Hague uh, have received the link, link to subscribe for housing via the ISS. And I heard that there have been some hiccup, hiccups due to a new electronic system but that will be solved today or tomorrow. So, so if you have registered or indicated that you would be interested in the housing via the ISS, you will get uh, a message uh, today or tomorrow where you can uh, indicate um, your choice. For those of you who have not registered yet, but would be uh, interesting to make use of housing via ISS, you can still uh, indicate it and, and, and do so. Um, some of our students choose not to live in the ISS uh, housing, but they look at the private market. Uh, we do provide links for those uh, also on our website. Um, but you should realize uh, that the prices that they normally mention are only for the rent of the room. And additional costs like water, electricity, Wi-Fi are normally not included 
in the, in the price indicated on, on websites. Also, uh, a room you rent on the private market is normally not furnished. So that's also something to check whether it's just an empty room or whether it's, it's with furniture um, um, provided. The housing of uh, I, that is arranged via ISS, the dorms, the hostels, they have uh, the, the basic furniture is, is there. Um, also, we can't guarantee that the housing on the private market are corona proof. So that's something you have to be alert on, on yourself as well. Uh, but still, maybe you can ask it in a Facebook group or in a WhatsApp group for other students who are now renting on the private market for their experience and maybe they have uh, suggestions. So student life, that's the next slide and the last slide. Um, and uh, well, I mentioned already the introduction program. We have a student organization, scholars who are very active in organizing all kinds of events like an international uh, day. There are sports facilities, there are excursions, movies, debates organized. Um, I think uh, Niati is the best person to tell you more about what's happening and what's going on in student life uh, at ISS. So now I get to the end of my presentation. Um, I think we got already quite some questions in the chat environment. If you have questions, please ask them and we try to answer them as much as possible. Uh, so now I get to the end of my uh, short presentation. Uh, so, uh, Darren, uh, have you indicated already a question that we would, uh, that one of us can answer? Yeah, this is, I think, the question that keeps coming up or popping out is about housing. When they will receive the information, I think you did say tomorrow or something, but I will let Mariana to answer that. Uh, so they want to know about housing, when they can buy a ticket, uh, and then, uh, yeah, let's start with that first. Yes, that's a good one. Um, you received from us an email, are you interested in housing? And then you replied and we sent those names on to our housing officer. Uh, the housing is uh, under the, the, the housing organizations is called Duo. And they had some hiccups in their computer system which have now been solved. I've been told by our housing officer, our ISS housing officer. So he said that this afternoon, all the names and details will be uploaded in the duo system. And after that, also this afternoon, you should receive an email with your login details, and then you can choose a room. So you have been waiting for a while, but it should be okay today or tomorrow. Um, the housings, the, the day you can move into your room is the 1st of September. This is, this can't be earlier. That's just a date that duo sets. Um, so from the 1st of September onwards, you can move in. Uh, the introduction program starts on the 5th on a Monday. Um, so if you arrive, around that time that should be good only for the students from the migration track they always have an introduction day with all the universities on friday the second so for those students please try to be in the netherlands on the second thanks mariana niati um can you maybe share a little bit of experience about your preparation before you, you know, about accommodation, because there's a lot of question about accommodation. Maybe you can also say something that it will be okay and everything will be on time. <laughs> yeah, seriously, it does sound really stressful. I was very stressed as well. You don't have to worry. Um, so I know that there are, I know of people who are already arriving earlier. Um, and I know that some of you are looking to sublet uh, from, you know, different people in the Netherlands. That is definitely possible. Um, and I know that Scholas, our uh, student association, will also be helping to figure out what we can to help make it easier for you. Um, 
Yes, it's true. I mean, for me personally, I managed to kind of speak to Duo and get my room about a week uh, or 10 days before I arrived. So sometimes if you write to Duo, once you've registered for a house uh, in, in Doris or Bazarlan, which is our hostels, they will sometimes let you in a little bit earlier. So really, you don't have to worry. My recommendation for those of you who have not booked your tickets yet, just book it. Um, housing will definitely happen, especially if you've registered. I would seriously suggest you just book your ticket because it is getting expensive, and I know that. Um, I would also say for everybody who wants to look at housing outside, completely agree that it can be difficult to find houses. I tried as well. Um, but there are some Facebook groups that are very, very active. Things like expat, I'll write them in the chat for you, but things like expat uh, housing in The Hague. Um, there's two or three, I have to find the names, but they are available. And they definitely have both furnished and unfurnished housing options if you want. Uh, usually, if you're looking for a sublet for a couple of months, those are the fantastic options. You can find something long term from there once you're settled. So I'll definitely give you the names of those groups. It helps big time. Yeah. Um, and really, once you get here, if the stress will be off. Really, don't worry. Thanks, Niyaki. Um, There's a question about visa. Uh, there are still students waiting for visa and also some students are still unsure about uh, whether ISS will be processing their visa. Maybe Mariana, you can explain a little bit more about that, but how the visa process work. Yeah, once you have confirmed your funding for the program with us, with admission, with Els or me or Amina, um, we initiate the visa procedure for you. But that only means that we let our colleagues of the international office know that they can send you an email with instructions uh, on on what you need to do to apply for the visa. Um, so we start it, but you have to do the work yourself after that. And um, I saw a question on a visa for family. Uh, we only do the visa for students well through the international office uh, through a short visa procedure but if students want to bring their family uh, they have to arrange that themselves iss nor international office can help with that process thank you mariana a uh, question for niati about public transportation and a little bit information if there is some kind of discount or something like that for students Maybe you can elaborate a little bit about public transportation or bicycling, for example. <laughs> bicycling. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we do have, okay, so EU students, if I remember correctly, Mariana, we could please correct me if I'm wrong. The EU students have uh, discounts on like student uh cards essentially which basically gives you free public transportation but for the rest of us you can actually apply for a personalized ov chip card i don't have mine with me otherwise i would show you uh essentially it's like a tap card you can use to enter all the public transportation and you can get discounts on it for up to 40 percent you have right. to apply for it yeah, we, we, uh, we can help it. you once you get there we but, oh it. yeah there you go yeah, we can share it. Thank you, Rika. So <laughs> those are very useful. Your photo is on it, as you can see. Your name is on it. So don't lose it. But it does come in very, very handy. You can use it everywhere. Um, as for bicycling, if you know how to cycle, great. Uh, you could get bicycles secondhand from people who are leaving. Uh, you can get bicycles. They're very easy to find bicycles online through online marketplaces that you have here uh, through some students. You can go to bicycle shops and get good ones. For people who want really good bikes, don't mind spending a little bit more money. There's something called Swap Feeds, uh, which essentially is a very, very good program where you get a cycle. You pay a slightly higher monthly rental, but anything that happens to that bicycle is covered. You can get a new one basically next day. It is really, really good for people who cycle all the time everywhere yeah so cycling is possible especially you you have to get used to it but it's definitely very easy thank you niati um just some warning about buying things online or also uh renting place via online just be careful that there are a lot of scammers as well so keep that in mind for bicycling and when you're renting houses uh, be do not transfer any money or something like that until you have the product or you see the product 
and make sure you test them and things like that. So uh, in the past, it has happened before that students has been scammed. So I don't want that to happen to any of you. So keep that in mind, please. Um, now, there is a question about insurance and accommodation again, but maybe the insurance part. Uh, Mariana, you want to explain a little bit more about how health insurance works? Yeah, we, um, we arrange for most students and most of the students paid for the insurance, uh, a student insurance with the Aon insurance company. Um, we send you a leaflet with details in our practical information info so that you can see what it covers. If you already have an insurance, like EU citizens or sometimes other nationalities also, with a worldwide coverage, then you don't have to take out an extra insurance. Um, we, we do the insurance with a start date just before you travel to the Netherlands. So it's important that you let us know when you plan to arrive so that you are also covered while you are traveling. Thanks, Mariana. Really quickly about visa again. Um, now, students would like, some students have not received their visa, but they want to buy their plane ticket. Is that advisable or should they wait or? Yeah, this is a question that the, the international office, they always emphasize wait until the visa is approved and in your passport, because apart from the process in the Netherlands, there's also the process at the embassy. Um, the issue, actual issuing of the visa in your passport, which can take time. But if you re receive the, if the, the visa application is already on its way, we expect that all will be well by the end of August. So officially, you're not supposed to buy a ticket, but as Niati says, tickets are getting very expensive. So it's always a bit of a risk. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mariana. Um, there's a very specific question about ISS OAS scholarship. Uh, some students have not received the final decision. Is that right? Or is it on, still ongoing? I don't know who, Vika or Mariana? Maybe Mariana can answer this. Or Vika? Okay. Yeah, I can answer it. Uh, that's a good question. It's indeed a scholarship funded through the ISS and Organization of American States. And we are in the pro process of signing the agreement with the Organization of American States, but that does take quite some time. Um, so uh, the scholarship consists of, of uh, a part funded through the ISS and a part funded through uh, the OAS. For the part funded through ISS, we guarantee that you can get that part of the, the, the scholarship or, or it's a, a fee reduction. For the OAS, the decision will come only in uh, August, uh, but you are on the list if you are uh, nominated for a, a scholarship, and then you will be informed in, in August, September, whether you indeed will receive this, this extra amount of 4,000 US dollars. Um, so I know this is a bit inconvenient. If you have questions, I would suggest to contact the admission office about it because it can be a crucial for, for uh, uh, 4,000 uh, US dollars is quite substantial. And we're still working on it very hard, both on our side and the OAS side to get the agreement signed, but only after it's signed, we can, uh, these scholarships can be allocated. Okay. Thank you, uh, Rika. I think maybe the question is again for you, maybe it's about the academic calendar and when will that be ready for students to have a look? Um, it will be available in August and then it will be also be published on, on the website. It will not be printed. Uh, we're not doing that anymore. It's quite a thick uh, booklet if you would do so. Um, but if, it, if it's about orientating yourself on what will be on offer, you can really use the old academic calendar that applies for the current academic year because there will be some changes. But to get, to get the overall picture, um, you can use the old one. Okay, thank you, Vika. Um, question about working while studying. Um, I don't know if uh, Niati and also maybe Mariana want to say something. Niati, you want to say something first? 
Uh, yeah, I was going to say something about the calendar as well. I used the old academic calendar to book my ticket, but also to understand orientation, all the different courses that were made available. It does change, but it's very, very useful. Um, and so just use that. Don't worry. It won't be too different, I think. I, I'm also working, uh, I'm on, on the team working on the calendar, so we, we also know what to expect. <laughs> Don't worry. As for working, I think Darren and I, we've had several conversations on this. It is possible. It's not necessarily recommended all the time, but we do have people who work um, part-time, usually in the evenings or on the weekends, either in blue-collar jobs or uh, white-collar internships. It's possible so long as you know how to balance your time, really. And we would suggest, I think, Anybody you speak to in the old batch, in, in, in my batch would say it's best to start working um, part time in a job that doesn't require you to use brain power in the first first, you know, six, eight months after that, then if you want to use your brain power, then from term three, which is roughly in April, May, then you can start using uh, then you can kind of get an internship on the side. Absolutely. But until then, yeah, it, it can be very intense. It's a lot of fun but uh, your brain will be stretched to its max. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Anything you would like to add, Mariana or Vika, about working or maybe a little bit about internship as well? Um, um, yeah, I can say something about working. There is a distinction. If, if you get a, a formal job, you should be aware that you are allowed to work a maximum of eight hours a week. Uh, when you are uh, non-European. For the European, the, the, there's more possible, but that's something to, to keep an eye on. Um, on internships, uh, I know that for the Moonless MAP students, it's obligatory to, to arrange an internship. Um, for other students, I know that some of them are, are looking for internships, or maybe I should also call it volunteer jobs, uh, because you can register an internship on your academic transcript, that is an option, but I know that also quite some students decide to, to help an NGO to organize a conference, to get some contacts, to, to meet other people. And then it's a more an, a kind of a, a volunteer job. Uh, when you're looking on, on sites for internships in the Netherlands, you will see that this is more directed to students, regular Dutch students at the Dutch university who are normally available for, say, four months for four days a week. So if you see an announcement of an internship, uh, pay attention to, to, the, uh, to the, the size and, and the, the, uh, the, the time that is required for the internship. And if in doubt, you can contact the organization, ask them for what the time that you have available, whether there's another assignment uh, for you. I think it's interesting to get to know that there are many international organizations in, in the Netherlands, in The Hague, uh, and uh, it's a, an interesting opportunity to, to find out whether you can do some volunteer work somewhere or help organize things or do a, a real internship. In general, internships are not paid for in the Netherlands. So that's uh, if you're looking to, for a way to, to make some money, uh, I would advise you to, to look for other jobs. Thank you, Vika. Um... Question to Niyati, maybe, please. Uh, some students are confused how the weather is in the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> the Great question. I'm also a bit confused sometimes. I don't know what to bring <laughs> when I go out. A thin jacket, a thick jacket, no jacket. So, Niyati, how did you manage, especially during winter, you know, all the you know, good advice? <laughs> I'm just typing something in the group chat for everybody. Um, it is in capital letters for a reason, okay? <laughs> Baltimore is this amazing app. It is. It covers a lot of European weather as well, not just the Netherlands. Um, it tells you essentially what the temperature is going to be like. It tells you about pre precipitations, if it's going to rain, sunny, all that stuff. On average, I would say if you're coming from a tropical country, um, be prepared to feel very cold the first few weeks. You, your body will get used to it. But Dutch, uh, I come from a tropical country, so I know this. Dutch cold tends to go into your bones. So if you don't come from a cold country, be prepared to feel a bit cold, especially. I would suggest that instead of buying things in your native country, if you come from a warm country, come here and buy your warm clothes. So come prepared with one or two sweaters. And in the first two weeks, then you can go shopping. There's a lot of places you can buy secondhand stuff, which is cheaper. You can buy it 
side off old batch students. Um, and you get good quality stuff here for a cheaper price as well. So I would suggest you come here and buy it. It did not snow much last year. It snowed, I think, once or twice. But um, if depending on where you travel, you may need uh, snow clothing as well. Just get a lot of warm woolens if you can um, and get you know, tights underneath like thermal underwear and things like that is also very, very useful. If you live in duo, any Doris, any duo housing, so the hostel housing, we have heaters and they generally are extremely warm. Sometimes it feels like you're in the tropics when you turn on the heater, so you don't have to worry. But most of it really is, um, I think the highest weather we've had so far is about 28 degrees and it felt like it was 35. And the lowest we've had was, I think, three, and it felt like it was minus seven or something. So it's a big range, but not it's not too bad. You just have to know. You'll get used to how to dress very quickly. But just be prepared with a couple of different sweaters. And make sure that you have rain gear. Make sure your shoes are good for rain. Make sure you have a rain jacket at all times. Yeah. Umbrellas do not work. <laughs> because of the wind. Yes. Yes, yeah. because of the wind. You need a wind sheeter or uh, umbrellas will not help you. Yeah. Netherlands is very flat, so the wind just <laughs> tends to go through. And we are also very close to the beach. So it's about mm. 15 minutes bicycling from ISS, which is also great for you when uh, during summer. And I think in also when you come here in September, the weather is, can be still warm, so you can still bicycle there or take the tram there uh, to enjoy the beach um so yeah and we also have blinkered stadium there so if people want to do sports it's really nice to cycle over there in the winter or the summer and you can kind of do sports even if it's too cold outside you do it indoors yeah to explain on that every sunday all students of iss uh, are given the opportunity to do sports in this place called blinkered uh, what Niati explained earlier, you can play football, uh, indoor football, uh, basketball, volleyball, you can run indoors and things like that. So this is this happened every Sunday. Uh, so four years ago, we were the champions of inter-university. Um, no pressure on you. Uh, last year, we didn't do very, or this year, we didn't do very well. So there's high expectation on this new group. So uh, bring your gears <laughs> for next year. Um, yeah, for deferral, I'm just reading out questions here uh, that I see. Uh, uh, so for deferral, yeah, you can only do it uh, at the beginning of October. Uh, so you can't do anything at the moment, unfortunately. I think there is no more questions. So I, I see. I okay. see a question of uh, about accommodation for an OKP scholarship okay. student. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, and yes, indeed, there will be accommodation for OKP scholarship students. Uh, in fact, it's an, an obligation for both uh, ISS and for the OKP students that we arrange housing for you. Um, so th that should be okay. And indeed, uh, and deferral, we can only the system via StudyLink, you apply to the ISS and the system opens only as of the 1st of October, but then you will receive a notification from the admission office that you can apply for a deferral for the, the new year. Um, there's a question about knowing Dutch. <laughs> I think that's a question for you, Dara, <laughs> or for Niati. <laughs> It's a very easy to. language. Yeah, it's very easy. <laughs> oh dear, yes, you can learn to read. Uh, you can learn Dutch, Rinda. We did, a few of us did actually have Dutch classes in school, which was organized because there were enough of us who wanted to learn it. So we had it via Martin, our um, welfare officer here. But uh, honestly speaking, most people here speak English. Uh, you don't have to worry about it at all. All in the cities, everybody speaks English pretty fluently, actually. Uh, Dutch is just, it's fun to learn. It's a difficult language because of the way you pronounce a lot of things, but uh, it's if you are fluent in English, you can learn Dutch relatively quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't well, need it though. You yeah, don't need it's it. It's very optimistic, yeah. but uh, yeah. <laughs> I have great faith in all of us. Thank you, Darren. Okay. I've been <laughs> staying in the Netherlands for 12 years uh, and my dad is still so so. so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a question about 
part-time masters. This I think I saw this question earlier. Sorry for not answering this. Um, now I think this I think Sayima is already uh, a student. I mean, sorry, uh, been admitted as a full-time student. So she wants to know if it's possible to opt for part-time master. Uh, it is. Uh, if she's admitted already, that, that is still an, an option. She can then send an email to the admission uh, office to indicate that she, she would be interested in taking the, the master part-time. And then the next step will be uh, to discuss with the convener of the major um, how the program will be set up in a part-time setup uh, for you. But so that's does, a tailor-made approach. It does depend on the scholarship, yeah? Oh right, that's true. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's that's clear now. You you can do your part time, but that really de okay. Okay. I don't have a scholarship. Then it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a question about having their spouse to stay in the ISS accommodation. Is it possible, uh, Mariana? A spouse. Yeah, or kids. Yeah. Well. No, most rooms, we, there are mainly single rooms. There are some double rooms, but our housing officer says they are all taken. And the double rooms are for couples, but there are no rooms left. And children are not allowed in the student housing. Okay, that's clear. Um, people having food concerns. You should not. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, Indian groceries. Yeah, there's a lot of Chinese and Indian. Well, it's a Chinese grocery with a lot of Indian stuff as well in there. So do not worry about food. They, uh, don't worry about your spices. I'm worried. I was worried as well 12 years ago when I came to the Netherlands to do my master. Um, but yeah, it's uh, not necessary. And there's also, you really don't have to worry at all. I don't know who asked that, but you really don't. There's also an amazing market, which um, you can go to called Haximart. It's, uh, it's probably about 10, 15 minutes cycle from ISS. And they have um, food markets four times a week where you can get and almost any kind of grocery you could think of is available there. Um, it's amazing. It's really, really cool. You get everything you would want and it is absolutely cheaper than trying to shop in some of the local supermarkets as well. So if you have time, you should definitely go there as well. Yeah, that is, ex that is a very good uh, advice because it's really, really, really good prices uh, in the Haksa market because you can buy fruits and, and everything. beautiful stuff. Yeah. Yeah, or beautiful stuff. So mm. keep that in mind uh, and don't worry uh, when you come here, the so-called old batch, so Niati's batch will be here as well. Uh, you, can, you will have the chance to mingle with them and uh, you can ask all, all the uh, advices, uh, all the tips and tricks, let's say, about uh, how to uh, make yourself feel comfortable staying in the Netherlands because I'm very sure they'll be more than happy to give you all the necessary information. Now, uh, airport pickup, uh, I think it was touched earlier that there will be an airport pickup, that it will be organized by students, all batch. Uh, so just so you know that there will be an airport pickup also for OKP students. Okay, so um, 10 minutes and uh, there is no more questions, I think. <laughs> Don't see it. Um, any last words from Mariana, Vika, or Niati at all? Or? Yeah, I think we covered uh, all questions. So um, we are looking forward to meet you here in, in The Hague. And the weather is, for, for me as a Dutch person, it's quite nice at the moment. <laughs> Maybe people disagree to that. So we hope <laughs> that you enjoyed this, uh, this webinar. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to uh, ask them either to, to Darren or to the admission office or maybe to Niati or to current students in the Facebook group or the WhatsApp group. I saw quite some uh, questions about how to, to find the WhatsApp group and the Facebook group, but all that information will be shared with you after this, um, after this webinar. Yeah, and here's the WhatsApp group. You can just oh, join. Right. Yeah. So just click the link and you can immediately join the WhatsApp group uh, now. But I think um, 
let's uh, we can now conclude the presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Niati, Vika, and Mariana for your time, uh, especially Niati. You must be very busy with all your research paper, collecting data and uh, analyzing them. Um, really appreciate your time. Uh, but to everyone else, uh, we really hope that this presentation has given you sufficient information for you to be relaxed a little bit as well. Uh, and hopefully, everything, well, everything will be okay. Uh, we will see you here. It will be. Yeah, it will be. Uh, we will see you here late August, I think, the last week of August. I think it starts your first uh, your orientation week. So, uh, yeah, the, the first week of September, right? So people arriving in, in September. I remember I saw one question of someone who was coming already the 28th of, of August, I think. I just remember this question. Uh, I would suggest to contact um, the, the housing office at ISIS. Maybe your room is already available and you can enter earlier. And if not, there are some very uh, cheap uh, hotels in the neighborhood and maybe it's easier to stay there for one or two nights if, if your room is not available yet. Yes. Well, okay, so thank you. I uh, hope to see all of you in the beginning of September. Have a oh, nice I appreciate someone who's saying tot ziens in Dutch. Oh yeah, someone, oh, I see, see you. Yeah. There's two, there's so, two, uh, there's two. <laughs> Yeah. There are two. Oh, tot ziens allemaal, even. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. so let's say tot ziens. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, have a nice day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.